Hi everybody, this is a super quick video about how to solve the dispersion relation in Excel using Solver, which you're going to want to do if you have to do the solution for a bunch of different depths or a bunch of different waves, like we often have to do in coastal engineering. So here's our old friend, the dispersion relation. And as we know, if we're going from right to left in this equation, where you know the wavelength and you're trying to figure out the period, plug and chug, you're done. But if you want to go from the left to the right, where you know the period and you're trying to figure out the wavelength, it requires iteration or some sort of other method. And you're not going to want to use a guess and check or a website kind of a method when you have to do this calculation, you know, 5, 10, or 1,000, or even 10,000 times, okay? So what I'm going to show you now is how you can use Excel to create a spreadsheet that will iterate for you and allow you to solve the dispersion relation for many different depths for a given wave period. Okay, so here's our Excel spreadsheet. So at the top, I'm going to go ahead and write in a period. Anybody have a period they want to use? Thank you, Brian. Nine seconds. I love nine seconds. One of my favorite periods. Um, here's the depth. We're going to make a column for the depth. And if you had to do many depths, you would just keep populating this. So let's say 300 meters. Um, maybe 150 meters, maybe we're working this way towards shore. Next column we're going to have is for the wavelength. Okay, so the wavelength is what we're trying to figure out with our dispersion relation for our nine second wave. Next column I'm going to do here is the wave number, mostly because we need it for a lot of the calculations, or, well, we need it for the dispersion relation, so we might as well make a make a shortcut here so we don't have to type everything into the uh, the equation window here. So um, what I'm going to do here is just make a guess for the wavelength. And if you don't know what to guess, you can guess the deep water wavelength for a given period, which is gt squared over 2 pi. Wave number is always equal to 2 times pi divided by the wavelength. Go ahead and code that in. Now what we need to do is actually solve our dispersion relation, okay? So this column here is going to be the left-hand side of the dispersion relation, which is omega squared. And then the right-hand side is gk hyperbolic tangent of kd. So left-hand side minus right-hand side. Now I'm going to code that in, what I just said. So equals omega squared, so 2 times pi divided by period, that's our omega. Uh, squared, and I guess for this one here, for this B1, I'm going to make sure that I'm always grabbing B1, so I'm going to hit F4 to do that, so it always grabs B1, and then we're going to do, that's left-hand side minus right-hand side, which is G, 9.81, times K, that's why I made a K column, times hyperbolic tangent of KD, so K times depth, ammo. Now, if, if I guess the right wavelength magically, the left-hand side minus the right-hand side of the dispersion relation would be zero. Oh, God, I hate when that happens. And it happens every time when you just guess. Fill that down. So we have some work to do in terms of guessing our wavelengths or getting them correctly. This is where Solver comes in. So we go to the Data tab. We hit Solver. You have to add that as an add-in if it's not already there. Google Add Solver to Excel and you'll figure that out. Here it is. It's under the Data tab. I already added it. So, so we click on Solver and here's what we're going to do. We want Excel to change the cells um, that are the wavelength. Excel is going to change these until the dispersion relation is satisfied. Now we're going to add a constraint and it's going to have to make sure that the left-hand side minus the right-hand side is equal to, what should it be? That's right, not five, zero. Zero is the right answer. So it has to be zero, okay? And then, I don't know about this stuff down here, I just leave the defaults. But this is what it should look like once you get it to work. These are all the wavelengths, so if you had a thousand, you would, you would have all those rows here. Um, and then these are the rows for left-hand side minus right-hand side. And we hit solve. Okay, so if we look at the results from that, we see that the wave in 300 meter depth, the nine second wave, has a wavelength of 126, and the same is true for 150. So how could that be? 
Well, there is one way that could be. Maybe this is not the wrong answer. Um, we know waves shorten as they get into shallow water, but we also know that waves do not shorten until they transition from deep water waves to intermediate water waves. So let's just do something here. Let's say 50 here, and I'm going to go ahead and paste all this stuff down, the formulas that we have here. And I'm going to go ahead and update the solver, and I need to tell solver to do that additional row. So instead of B4 to B5, I'm going to change this to B6. And for this one, I'm going to change that likewise to be D6 to include that row. And I'm going to go ahead and say solve. Oh, and it barely changed. So apparently a nine second wave is still not really an intermediate, barely an intermediate wave in 50 meter depth. This is bugging me. Let's go to 10. I got to see this work out here. All right, 10 meters. Now we'll go to solver. We'll add that additional row. So B7 instead of B6. D7 instead of D6. Solve. Okay, got a good near zero residual here. And finally, the wave is shortening. So this wave doesn't really transition to be an intermediate wave until about 50 meters or so, and then it starts to shorten according to what we know should happen. But you know, once you have this basic functionality, you can add all sorts of other columns, right? So if I wanted to add a column that would do the wave speed, for example, so wave speed uh, meters per second, this isn't going to change anything related to the dispersion relation. We're just using the results of the dispersion relation solution. So this is equal to L divided by T. Hit F4 so it grabs that cell always and doesn't change it as I drag this formula down. And we should see the wave slowing down because that's pretty basic, basic uh, behavior tied to the wavelength shortening. You can add all sorts of other columns here uh, depending on what you're trying to calculate. So if you were trying to calculate the wave height, you could have one here for wave height. And then you could say, okay, my offshore wave height is 2.3 meters, blah, blah, blah. And then you could have other columns that would help you to then use this information of wavelength and wave speed and other things to calculate the wave height as it changed uh, while the wave was getting uh, into shallower water. So anyway, this one spreadsheet, you know, what I just sh showed you here is kind of the backbone of almost all of the different calculations that uh, are important in coastal engineering. Well, that's just a really vague and gross overstatement. This is an important spreadsheet. I'll just leave it at that.